Good morning, friends. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Before we start today, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians and storytellers of Australia and pay my respects to Aboriginal people and their elders past, present and emerging towards our shared future. What a delicious book I've got for you today. It's from the Children's Book Council of Australia shortlisted text and it's from the Eva Pownall Awards section. And the text is called Iceberg. And this is, um, I'm dedicating this to Michael because he always talks about icebergs in our workshops. Now Claire Saxby is the author and she's written a number of books that I have in my personal library that I love. Here are some of them. You notice she writes about nature narratives. That's the genre that she calls her books on her website. And the special thing that I notice about Claire's texts is that she tells a narrative, but also she provides factual information for children so they can learn about the animal that she's talking about in the story. So there's an engaging narrative plus factual information. In some of her texts, she actually uses different fonts. You can see in the dingo text, her narrative is in one font, and then there's a different font, which looks like Calibri. This looks like Times New Roman is the narrative, and then um, Calibri or something similar is the actual factual information. So we've got examples in the one text of narrative and expository text which is a really great thing. But there's some of Claire's works. And today, um, the text Iceberg is illustrated by Jess Ratcliffe. <clears throat> now, the theoretical underpinning for the um, read aloud that I'm modelling for you today is from the National Reading Panel 2000. And they have a section in the summary section of steps for a read aloud. And the first one is building the field. And in this text, the field is all about climate change. What is an iceberg? Where do we find icebergs? Where is Antarctica? Look it up on the map. Who's been to Antarctica? Does anybody know anyone that's been to Antarctica? Does anybody know what the Aurora Australis is? All of these things we come up with in the text. And I think that it would be a great idea if teachers actually watched a video of Antarctica to talk about all of this new vocabulary in the text and the creatures that are in the text before you read it. So students um, can activate meaning based on what they already know in the text. Yeah. <clears throat> and then that way we're explicitly teaching vocabulary before we start. So they've got all those keys that they need to access meaning, which is the point of reading. Also, teachers don't forget to practice. You know, practice your read aloud so it comes, it comes alive for the students. It's so important. Now, this is a clever book because it's an example of personification. The iceberg is actually a character in the text, which is really interesting. Hmm. And it's all about nature. <clears throat> so let's get started. You can see there's beautiful pictures of icebergs and they're all cool colors. So we might talk about warm colors and cool colors and all of the different shapes, 3D shapes of the icebergs. And I know Michael always talks about the space underneath the iceberg. Now he compares um, them to textual concepts. You see a little bit of the textual concept at the top, but underneath it goes throughout the text and it carries on from text to text as students go from stage to stage in their writing and in their learning across school. That's why he uses it. There's a beautiful dedication here and it says to the scientists, and photographers who share their magic worlds. And I think that's wonderful. And you can see how big the iceberg is under the ocean. Here. Now, before we start here, we have to have a look at what's in the sky, the Aurora Australis, those lights that come from Antarctica. And we can see them in Southern Australia. And you can see them most in winter time, at the end of winter and springtime really important scientific principle. I have never seen them, but I would love to. In the final freeze of an Antarctic winter, green tails, 
wave across a star full sky as if to farewell endless nights. So you can see straight away that Claire Saxby is a master of figurative language. What does she mean by the final freeze of an Antarctic winter? She means it's just about the end of winter time, doesn't she? Green tails, where can you see the green tails on this page? Oh, in the sky, there are lights in the sky and they're beautiful coloured lights. And they're different to the coloured lights you see in the North Arctic circle. These are different, these are Antarctic. If this world looks empty, look closer. Those are penguin tracks and beneath the ice, orca roam. Now, of course, children will be hanging out of their seat trying to show you the tracks. It's like a story map where the penguins go. You can see a little penguin here. And look at this shadowy figure under the ice. It's an orca. What is an orca? It's a type of killer whale and they're black and white. So it's a new vocabulary word that you might put up in your chart for a tier two word. In the pale morning, an iceberg calves. How interesting. Shears from a glacier and plunges to the ocean in a haze of sparkle frost. The iceberg is flat topped, sharp and angular, and carries ancient weather in its layers of ice clothing, a coat for each year volcanoes blew, and black ash fell like snow. So we've got some similes happening, fell like snow. We've got an iceberg calves, so that's an example of personification because a cow calves and has babies, but an iceberg doesn't usually calve. What does Claire Saxby mean by that? She means that the iceberg falls off, the big iceberg, and makes a new one. It calves. It shears. What a beautiful use of verbs. It shears from a glacier and plunges to the ocean in, what a beautiful noun group, a haze of sparkle frost. What would that look like? We'd have to unpack that with our students, wouldn't we? A haze of sparkle frost. I can see all little bits of glitter flying around. If this world looks empty, look closer. So we've got some repetition happening here. Birds are coming. They know about Antarctic summers. So where have the birds been in the winter time? That might be a question to talk to children about. The new iceberg bobs in the water, an unfettered island, its mountains hidden underneath. So we'll stop there and unpack unfettered. Okay, it means if you're fettered, you have chains on your feet like a convict. Unfettered, it means you're free to float around and go wherever you want. An ED on the end of a word we know from our spelling is in past tense. Unfettered island, its mountain hidden underneath. So here's our little bit of our iceberg but look what's underneath it's much bigger the mountain is underneath the biggest part waves ripple away away oh to quiver at the pack ice cracks unshackle algae suspended all winter i wonder if anybody has any idea what algae is in the class algae is another new word for us it might even be a tier three word algae because it's a difficult one to spell isn't it it's technical language it's scientific language about antarctica some people that have swimming pools might know that algae's in their swimming pools. So some of your students in K2 might know what algae is. Cracks unshackle algae suspended all winter and under ice krill stir. What are krill? These are the tiny little creatures, a bit like prawns, that are the feed for lots of Antarctic creatures. Seals and whales. They all eat krill, but also I have krill every morning in a tablet to keep me healthy because it's an important fat called omega-3. Yeah, it's a very helpful thing to have. All of these creatures know that summer is near because it's changing. Leopard seals lurk. Remember when we watched that video from National Geographic before we read this book? Leopard seals, what did they look like? Very good, you remember. As a raft of penguins explode like black and white rockets from an ice hole. Fish, fat and sleek. The emperor's belly slap. How do you belly slap? Stand up, Fred and Sue. Show us a belly slap. Right, you whack your belly together. That's lots of fun, isn't it? And penguins do it all the time. Begin the inland trek to feed hungry chicks. Adelie penguins take turns to perch. Remember we saw those black and white penguins in the video. 
as melt water trickles past their rock nests. I wonder what melt water is. That's very good. Melt water is a compound word. It's made up of two words, melt and water. And I think it might be the water that runs down the iceberg and melts into the sea as the oceans become warmer as we get closer to summer in Antarctica. Summer arrives, sun sparkles on a murk green sea. Clouds of krill swim shallow and deep, feed and grow. Days stretch and nights shrink until the sun just taps the horizon. Now this is interesting. What do we mean by just taps the horizon? Well, actually in Antarctica, there's six months of summer when we, they have normal days like us. There are sh shorter days in winter to darkness. The days get shorter and they have darkness. And it's caused by a tilt of the Earth's axis in relation to the sun. So we'll talk more about that. That's really interesting. Fish hunt sulps, type of bird. Turns wheel overhead, blue-eyed coromants too, their wingspans wider than outstretched arms. Those are some of the birds that we'd see in Antarctica. There's a little surprise coming up for you. Humpback whales spiral, filter krill from giant mouthfuls of sea, and penguins dive deep for fish. Seals dive deeper to twitch whisker hunt. I wonder what twitch whisker hunt is. Let's talk about that. Squid chase krill, birds chase squid, orca gather, linger, watch and seize. Short-tailed she-waters feast, then return to their chicks. So we're talking about the small creatures eating the bigger creatures, eating the bigger creatures, and the biggest creatures eating the lot. But that's all about the cycle of life. And there's a beautiful pull out picture here that shows that cycle of life in Antarctica, which is so lovely. Beautiful piece of artwork by the illustrator of the text that shows that cycle, who eats what and why. And that doesn't just happen in Antarctica, it happens in nature everywhere. The iceberg drifts where the currents push, where the winds blow. Summer sets sun, softens edges. Undersea currents wash at the hidden mountain. And you can see the creatures cavorting on the ice. They're probably the Adelie penguins and the emperor penguins. Now we've moved from summer and we're going to autumn in Antarctica. Autumn brings shorter days. The sea cools, cools, cools. Visitors depart and you can see the cruise ships leaving. And there are lots of cruise ships in Antarctica now. It's quite common in the summer. Visitors depart to the deep, to warmer islands, to tropical birthing waters, to far away, summer, far away summers. I wonder what birthing waters are. Yes, I remember some people telling me the other day in news that they saw a whale on the beach in Newcastle that was going north with its baby. So whales that might live in Antarctica in summer, when the water becomes very cold, they go north to have their babies. They go into birthing waters and they come past the east coast of Australia and keep going north to birthing waters to have their babies where it's warmer. You may not have heard of that before. Seals cluster around holes until they too close. Loose frazzle crystals extend and join. Flip-edged pancakes jostle and raft. Rafts become flows. And that's interesting because it's F-L-O-E-S and it means a nice flow, like F-L-O-W, and they all join together to make mountains of ice for winter time. Sea ice thickens. Krill retreat to underberg hollows. So underberg, we haven't heard that word before. That's another compound word. Underberg, it might be underneath the iceberg. There might be little caves in the ice and that's where the krill hide in winter time to wait out winter. This iceberg, every iceberg 
is winter bound, ice bound, sea bound, stuck. Lots of compound words there, everybody. Sometimes rain falls, but mostly the sky swirls snow or ice crystals in this frozen desert. Winter tides swell and ebb. They go out and they come in again. Nights fall and fade. Storm winds rage down inland mountains. Mound long snow furrows and only fade when they find the sea. It may seem winter will never end when the sun fails to breach the horizon. So it's dark all day, every day and night. And even aurora trails only sometimes appear. Just wait. Remember the aurora trails at the beginning of the book? Let's have a look. From the aurora australis. They're not there in, in the de depth of winter. They come at the end of winter and the beginning of spring. Just wait. Spring returns. Waves lap, lap, lap the iceberg until it looks velvet soft. Currents drag. Winds push. The iceberg twists, tilts, rocks and shears. It is old now, tall and small and mellow. It eddies into a sheltered bay. That means it floats along. Tips and falls. Here the penguins coming back. Looks like we've got, I don't know, some seals up here. And we've got another iceberg that's fallen in from the, from the sea ice. This world is not empty, nor ever still. Far from the place we know, it feels everything that we do. Ocean, sky, snow and ice. Minute greens and giant blues dance a delicate dance. And a delicate dance means the balance of life. It means we have to look after our world. If I do something to our world to hurt it, then something else will be impacted because of that. In another pale Antarctic dawn, an iceberg carves and settles into the sea. And the cycle begins again. And then at the end, Claire Saxby tells us some information about global warming. And we've had lots of talks about global warming in class. This is what she says that she'd like you to know. Global warming is increasing the temperature in all our oceans. Seemingly small temperature changes can have a big impact in the Antarctic. Loss of sea ice means a loss of habitat or homes of animals that live on and beneath the ice. Melting sea slows the growth of algae. Less algae means fewer krill, and that in turn reduces the food available for every other animal in Antarctica. Antarctica is an environment like no other on Earth. It inspires awe. It's fantastic, and it deserves understanding, and it needs our protection. And that's why this book, is so important. And let's have a look at the summary on the back to finish. In the final freeze of an Antarctic winter, green tails, that's the aurora australis that we talked about, wave across a starful sky as if to farewell endless nights because it's dark for six months of the year in Antarctica. If this world looks empty, look closer. And that's what we've done in this book. A stunning lyrical portrayal of the life cycle of an iceberg born into spring and travelling through the seasons before dying into a new spring. I hope you get to read the iceberg with your children in your classrooms.